Hey everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate how we can configure a VLAN on our FS S1400 switch. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to have to work with two things, the switch uh, software and then also the router software. Um, so the, the router portion of the configuration is going to be uh, specific to whatever router software you have, um, but the FS switch configuration should be uh, the same. So first I'm going to head over to our switch admin page and I'm also going to go to my router page. So let me just log in here. So let's configure, let's do the, the changes we need to make on the switch. So right now I have, uh, this is the switch and I have three um, ethernet cords plugged in basically. So this 24 port here, this is actually running a uh, security camera. So I'll actually pull that up just to demonstrate uh, what's going on here. So this camera here is um, currently on my network. Uh, just on this 192.168.0 subnet. So this is my internal network um, that all my other devices are on. What I would like is to isolate this particular device to a specific VLAN that doesn't have access to the internet. Um, so the goal is we want this subnet to change and we want it to be on its own separate VLAN. So let's close this for now. Um, this port I have uh, connected to a wireless access point. And then this port two, that is um, the internet basically. So the first thing we need to do is go to L2 config here. It's really simple, the configuration on the switch. Uh, it's the router that's a little bit trickier. Um, and we're just gonna go to VLAN config and click new. And I'm gonna make a VLAN ID, let's just go with eight. So this is just uh, you know a tag that's telling um, all the traffic that this particular port should be uh, tagged as eight. And VLAN name, let's just call it VLAN eight. And let's hit apply. And I'm actually gonna go in and edit this again. And now what we need to do is for that port two, which is where the internet's coming from, we need to change that mode to trunk. And that basically means that it's going to be able to access uh, different VLANs, not just whatever one we have specified here. Um, so let's just leave that like untag, uh, leave that as no. And now for port 24, we need to make that our VLAN eight. So let me apply and save. So make sure you also save it after applying. And let me just take a look at this. Okay, so that that's good. Um, believe it or not, that's the only configuration that we need to make on the switch. So I'm going to head over to the router now and set this up. So this is specific to OpenWRT. Um, you might need to figure out how to do it on your own router, but basically we need to uh, enable VLANs and get that working. So first thing we need to do is go to interfaces and devices, and we're going to add a device configuration and it's a VLAN. Now this VLAN ID needs to be the same one that you just Created, so I did eight. Uh, this needs to be Ethernet switch and click save. I'm going to save and apply. All right, now we need to go back to interfaces and actually add a new interface. So let's call this VLAN 8 interface static address and device. We need to give it that that software VLAN that we just created and create the interface. Um, so we need to give it an IP. So this is where we specify the different subnets. So I'm going to say 192.168.8.1. So any um, devices that connect on this VLAN will be uh, have this eight in it. Um, let's do that. And then that looks good. And if we go to DHCP server, we just need to set this up and click save. And there are a lot of useful YouTube videos that help me figure out how to configure the OpenWRT. Um, and I will link them in the, in the uh, description. All right, so we're not done yet. We need to now go to switch. And we need to add the VLAN. So this is VLAN eight. 
VLAN 8. And we need to tag a few of these ports. So this is referring to my router. So the back of my router, I have two wires hooked up to it. Basically, this is going to a different switch and this is going to the uh, FS switch. So we need to tag that traffic. Uh, and we want the WAN to be tagged and this one. And then save and apply. And then the last thing we need to do is uh, set up a firewall rule. So if we go to network firewall, we need to add a zone, just call this VLAN 8. Covered networks, we want the VLAN 8 interface. And I'm just going to select LAN here so I can communicate with um, the LAN, but not the WAN, so not the, the external internet. So let's save that. Save and apply. Okay, and now what I'm expecting to see, um, actually I need to unplug the camera and plug it back in. Uh, so I'm gonna do that right now, but after I do that, we should see our new camera device pop up here with a dot eight. So let me go um, unplug the camera and plug it back in to restart it, and we'll uh, pick it back up. All right, so let me refresh this. I just plugged it back in. It might take like a minute for the camera to actually boot up, but let's just see if it's on here yet. Uh, so there it is, front. So that's the camera host name. And here we see the address is 192.168.8.115. Um, so we should be able to just throw this in the browser and log into the camera that way. Little uh, trick, if you are prompted with this, you can actually type, this is unsafe and hit enter and it'll allow you to pass through. Uh, don't know why it's like that, but yeah, so now we're accessing um, our camera on this new VLAN and let's just go actually set it up in the, the camera app. Um, so you'll notice it's not connecting because it's using the old IP address. So I'm gonna delete the old camera and add a new one. And anytime it, it seems when it's on a different VLAN, it, it, the network scan doesn't work, um, which I guess makes sense. So we're just going to um, type it in manually. Dot eight, dot, was it 115? Yeah, 115. And let's add that. Okay, there's the camera running on our separate VLAN. And now, so you might be wondering, how can we verify that this device is no longer able to access the internet? And one of the ways that I tested that, uh, one of the, actually one of the reasons I even wanted to separate this device on its own VLAN uh, was because I was actually outside of my house um, and I opened up the RioLink app and I was able to see my footage. And I didn't understand how that was working because I didn't explicitly set any port forwarding rules or anything like that, but yet I was still able to see um, you know, see the footage. So that told me something's going on where, you know, it's talking to the internet and traffic is getting out. And I think what it is, is this uh, UPnP, so universal plug and play, uh, is a network protocol that allows devices to automatically set port forwarding rules for themselves. So that's a little scary. Um, so what I did, uh, how I can test this is actually on my phone. So I can um, go on my phone, open the RioLink app, and um, if I'm just using cellular data without my VPN turned on, uh, we shouldn't see any footage. And then if I turn uh, my VPN on, I'll be on my home network and we will see footage. So I'm gonna um, just demonstrate that on my phone and uh, just, just as a way to prove that it's actually you know, behaving the way we expect. All right, here we are on the phone. I'm just demonstrating that I have Wi-Fi turned off and I'm opening up the RioLink camera app now, since we're on cellular here, I'm expecting not to be able to see video because we've actually, on this VLAN, we've cut off access to the internet with our firewall. Um, so this is exactly what I expect it to uh, have trouble connecting, which is exactly what I want. Um, so you see connection failed. Now I'm turning the Wi-Fi on and now I'm on my home network and you'll see, there we are, we're able to see the video. Um, and yeah, that's it. So I hope that was helpful. Um, 
thank you fs.com for letting me try out this switch uh it's been great i've had no no issues with it super simple to set up vlans um and yeah thanks for watching everyone